Hey everyone, I'm here with a one year review of the Vi Air uh, 12 volt uh, air compressor that uh, I, uh, I bought uh, to monitor tire pressure, not to monitor tire pressure, forgive me, but to increase tire pressure or uh, put some air in tires that were, were uh, running low. And I bought it about a year ago. It's, as I say, the Vi Air, it's model 400 P-RV automatic portable compressor. Now, there's a couple of uh, different models out there that Bayer makes. This is the manufacturer that I definitely recommend. I would recommend the higher, a little bit higher end model in that this has a higher uh, pass through rate. In other words, it, it can pass, it can, it can inflate a tire a lot more quickly than the models that are rated a, a little lower than this one. And that's the only difference is how quickly, if you do need air, do you want it to come up to, to uh, pressure. So I thought, uh, you know, I reviewed it when I first bought it. I have used it for a whole year and I think now I'm really in a good position to tell you what I think about it. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, I could not be happier. And forgive me for looking the way I do. I've been out I'm about to uh, break camp tomorrow to head to the Petrified Forest. And before I do that, part of my routine is to get to, to get everything that's on the outside of the trailer, the uh, chairs and mat and just everything else on the outside, kind of put away and stowed in the truck so that tomorrow morning, uh, the only thing I need to do is to get the inside straightened up and then hitch the trailer to the truck and I'm off. So because I'm a solo traveler, it makes sense to do it that way. Anyhow, back to the Vier. It comes with everything you could possibly need. Uh, uh, this is the 12-volt model, and what you do is, as the truck is on, so you could use it if you needed air on the side of the road. Um, simply, the red goes on. You turn the truck on, obviously. This goes to the red terminal. This goes to uh, the negative, negative side. And you just flip the switch, and it powers up. Uh, you need to let it uh, maybe for 30 seconds or so until it is uh, pressurized. And then what I do is I walk around and I take the stems off of my uh, individual tires. Uh, the reason I really like this particular model is it comes with this attachment. And uh, it is a screw-on that you can put right on the end of your valve stem. And once it's on tight, then you can feel this pressurize. And then the, the uh, screen here, the dial, will tell you how much air pressure you have in the tire currently. And if you need additional pressure, then it's just a trigger. Pull the trigger and hold it. It usually goes beyond 80, up to like 100 or so. And then when you leave it, uh, you uh, take the pressure off, the gauge will go back down to where the, the tire is pressurized. Uh, 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 it'll go down to the, the pressurized uh, rate that the tire has. It'll go down to the amount of air in the tire. Let's put it that way. So anyway, it's a real simple, secure system. It comes in a nifty bag where you can keep everything uh, nicely stowed. Up front there are hoses, and in the back there are two hoses here, the, the kind that are the circular, so it's, it's uh, not going to get all tangled up. Uh, the primary hose that attaches to the compressor itself is up front, and in the pa pouch in the back, you have your auxiliary hose if you need it, and, and the trailer my size certainly I do. And that goes together and then gives me about, well, I would say 40, 45, maybe as much as 50 feet of air hose when you connect it to this part of the uh, contraption. It also comes with a uh, a truck kind of a valve if you want to. You can put this into the compressor, check this to see how much uh, pressure you have, and then pressurize it with this. But I prefer the um, I prefer the dial. I think it's just much more accurate and easier to use. So my impression is I would not be without this. Uh, I'm, I'm one who probably like most travelers is very concerned about their tires. After all, I'm a full-time RVer. Uh, that's my house that those tires are, are supporting. And I want to know that they are in good shape. The tires themselves, the tread is good, and that they are properly pressurized. Uh, when I bought the trailer, it came with some, uh, they were appropriate, but they were made in China, and I just was um, just a little too cautious, maybe hesitant, uh, skeptical 
whatever. They probably were perfectly good tires, but I replaced all four of them last March before I took off and put Goodyear Endurance, uh, the proper weight rating. I think they're eight ply steel belted uh, radials. I think it's eight, they may be 10. But anyway, whatever the appropriate uh, weight rating is for them. I put those on as well and uh, had had beautiful luck. In addition to that, uh, as uh, my travels, uh, I'm trying to think what time of year it was. I think it was January, maybe the beginning of February. I noticed that one of my tires was not maintaining its pressure. You know, if I'd sit for three weeks, two weeks, which is about what I did at uh, camping, at dispersed camping at BLM, you'd be two weeks stationary someplace before you'd need to move on. And I always check my tires before I leave. And, and a couple of times it was consistently uh, going down to 65. It didn't seem to go any lower than 65, but it would go down to 65, it would not hold 80. So before I left uh, Yuma, Arizona, which is where this, this was in that area, before I left and to head on over into the California desert, I stopped by a truck tire place and had, uh, it turned out it was the valve stem. It was not anything that I had picked up as far as the tread was concerned or the tire. So I was very glad of that. So while I was there, it, it cost a bit, but I, I put eight, um, one, two, three, four, not eight. I put four uh, metal stems on the tires themselves and I have had not one bit of problem as far as the maintaining pressure from that point forward so that uh, that uh, solved my my issue so that took care of the problem then the next piece as far as tire safety is concerned is uh, to monitor your pressure when you're moving uh, certainly as I just uh, spent a couple of minutes explaining before I go anywhere I always check the tire pressure to make sure that it's up at the the rate that it needs to be. Uh, however, sometimes you have problems that you're driving down the road and you need to be uh, aware of them. One of the biggest things I understand as far as tire uh, failure is concerned is the increase in friction, therefore heat, uh, with tires that are underinflated at, at the loads that they need to bury or uh, bear. So uh, 80 pounds of pressure is what's recommended. I tried to keep them at, at 80. But as you're traveling down the road, if you see that you've got a, a tire or two that is losing pressure, then you can very quickly find the next, either the next exit or more than likely the next uh, rest area where you can pull through where your trucks and RVs are and take care of the issue there by adding additional air and then monitoring it to make sure that the tire is holding the air. And if not, then as soon as you get to some place where you can, you can get the tire actually fixed, repaired, or checked to see what, what the issue is. Now, there's absolutely nothing you can do about a blowout. I mean, that's a sudden, complete, and total loss of, of pressure in a tire. It's blown. Sometimes it comes off the rim. Sometimes you don't even know it. Although I think in this, in a travel trailer, more than maybe a mobile a motor home or a, even a fifth wheel, you might not notice it as much. But what are you going to do uh, to monitor your pressure as you're driving? And that's where the second part of this team comes in. And that's one of these. This is a tire uh, pressure monitor. And uh, you saw a bit ago that each of those, just, when I took the, ca the cap off the valve stem, there was a kind of an ovaloid shaped black thing that was on the end. And that is a uh, transmitter, senses the tire pressure, the PSI, and then takes it and transmits it to uh, this particular receiver, which is inside the truck. Now again, I'm not gonna be, you know, if, if a tire blows, I, you know, I hit a road hazard or something and it's a sudden loss, this isn't gonna help you because, you know, it's all right, too late, the tire's flat. But what this does help me as I'm traveling down the road, it will individually tell me the temperature of the tire and its current PSI. And of course, as you imagine, as tires heat up, of course, the PSI increases. So that'll, that's part and parcel of what happens here. But you can monitor it, and you know that it's here within uh, safe uh, ranges. So I highly recommend this. This is the TST, I think it's uh, model 507 widescreen display. I'd hate to see what the normal dis uh, screen display is if this is the widescreen. And again, it's a year old. I believe I got it on Amazon. Uh, a neighbor here where I'm parked just checked it. I think he's saying that they're around $260. So it's, it's a little bit on the expensive side. But on the other hand, you know, you just can't, you just can't put a price on your, your, your uh, tire safety on your safety. And certainly because this is my home, it, it has even more relevance for me. But even a, a vacation or someone who's on the road for three or four months a year, 
during the summertime, but retirees who have a home base, it's still important to make sure that uh, as you travel, you're as safe as possible. So there you have it, uh, recommendations A plus on both of these. Uh, I would not be without it. I would not be especially without this. Uh, this, because I travel so much, I think is a good idea as well. So together, they, I feel like I've got my bases covered and that I'm, I'm as safe as I can be uh, from the tire point of view. So I hope this is a uh, helpful review. As, as I say, uh, Amazon, I know you can get this. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can get both of these pieces on Amazon. And after a year, I can't tell you that, uh, as I said before, I'm kind of repeating myself here. Uh, I can give you my, my highest recommendation. They work, and they work very, very well. On a side note, not that this is about it, I also have the Overdrive uh, RV, which is basically nothing more than the Garmin supersized uh, truck uh, display. I am not as enamored with that at all. Uh, it seems to be a little less than capable as far as GPS coordinates are concerned and some of those kinds of things. So I'm not quite as happy. I have the Overdrive. I think it's Overdrive 7. And that one I would probably take a pass on. If you've got a good, if you've got a good cell phone, you've got uh, Google, especially if it's big enough and you can have the audible uh, instructions like turn in the next 200 feet or so. Uh, it gives you instructions like that. I think you can probably get along with it without it. So I have it, uh, again, it's a couple of hundred dollars that I probably, in hindsight, I would not do again. But as I say, that's the subject of another video. But as far as these are concerned, highly recommended. Go out and get them for you. You will have the peace of mind in knowing that you've done the best you can as far as your tire safety and road safety is concerned. So again, if you uh, like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, and comment below if you've had any other experiences with compressors or if you have another favorite. I'd like to hear about them as well, as with some of the subscribers. So have a great day. Have a good weekend. And enjoy this gorgeous weather.